All right, Bar Naturals, Prez, talk to the people, man. Let them know what's getting ready to go down. Yo, what's good, good money? Right. Today we're going to film the five best supersets to build a big chest and back. Now, let me give you a little intro. A superset is when you do one exercise to the next. You could do a superset for single muscles, and you could go, and what I mean is you could do a superset for chest, meaning two chest exercises back to back, or you could do a superset with two opposite muscle groups, meaning antagonist muscle groups. So, Opposite muscle groups are called antagonists. So chest and back would be an antagonist muscle. The antagonist of the chest is the back. The antagonist of the back is the chest. A synergist is a muscle that works together. So a synergist muscle with the chest would be the triceps. A synergist muscle with the back would be a delt. So for instance, we could do supersets chest to tricep. We could do chest to chest. We could do chest to back. We could do back to rear delt. Or we could do back to back. Superset again, all it is is one exercise to the next. One exercise, right after you do it, do that, you do another exercise. So today, I'm gonna show you five different supersets that you could do to build a big chest and back. So, I'm gonna give you five different styles of training for each superset routine that I'm gonna put you through. So, we're gonna go through isometric sets, we're gonna go through high rep sets, we're gonna go through hypertrophy sets, we're gonna go through explosive sets, and then we're gonna go through one that a beginner could use, uh, isolation type sets. So we're gonna start off with the easiest variation of each, which is gonna be isolation superset. This will be used to really pump blood into the muscles before getting into a main workout. So superset for chest and back for a main uh, isolation, we're gonna start with easy sets like this. You're gonna warm up just like this. We're gonna do single arm movement at first. So. We're gonna go for archer push-ups, one arm at a time. We're gonna go 10 on each side, that's five, just to show you guys. So, an isolation movement first, chest, right away to a superset, we're gonna go to back, we're gonna go to body rows. Remember guys, for rows, everything is engaged. You want your body to be in the position opposite of a push-up. So we don't want our butt sink we want our butt tight, everything tight. So straight from the push-ups, right to rows. So, two isolation movements to get blood flowing to the muscle groups. So we start the single arm archer push-up, 10 on each side, straight into 15 body weight rows. You do this for three sets, we move on to the next superset. So, progressing from there, we're gonna go in to more hypertrophy sets. Remember guys, hypertrophy training and sense means you're training in the six to 12 rep range. So what we're gonna do next, we go straight to dips and then straight to a pull-up bar. So next we're gonna go three sets Strict form dips to three set to super set with pull ups. So check it out. Full lockout. Full lockout. Full lockout. Remember guys, back to back. Straight from the dips, you're going to the pull-up bar. 10 pulls. Now even though the reps aren't that high, you're only hitting six to 10 on the dips, six to 10 on the pulls, working back to back muscle group, keeps the heart rate elevated, keeps the blood flowing from one muscle to the next. That's what's really gonna elevate the heart rate. When the blood has to disperse throughout the body, it doesn't know where to go, your heart rate's gonna elevate. Your heart's gonna start pumping more and more and more blood just so we can get to the place that it wants to go faster. So starting with the chest, you got your blood flowing to the front of the body. 
soon as you get to pose, all that blood that was rushing to your chest, now it's traveling to the back. Now in theory, when you're training the back, the chest is getting a little break. So when you're doing supersets, you want to keep the rest no longer than 90 seconds. So remember, when you're on the bar, the opposite muscle is getting a little break. So do the superset, take no more than another 90 seconds. Because remember, it's going to be an intense set. You guys can see I'm breathing heavy right now. Heart rate's going to be ele elevated. So you want it just to stay elevated to the point where it's just ta tapering off back to baseline and then get back into another set. So we started off, isolation movements, superset. Archer push-ups, 10 on each hand to 15 body rows. We do three sets of that. We come to the bar, to the dip bar first. Three sets, six to 10 reps, clean form, dips. Full lockout, full extension on the way down. Right into 10, six to 10, pull-ups. Strict form, full lockout, chin over the bar. We do three sets of that. That would be our hypertrophy training. Moving on from there, I'm gonna give you explosive type supersets that you guys could do. Now, explosive training really trains those type two muscle fibers, those explosive fast twitch fibers. Now, I've said previously, guys, your body got two type of muscle fibers in it. Type one, type two. Predominantly at birth, you're split up. You're born with about 50-50 ratio. Half type one, half type two. Depending on how you're raised, the environment you grow up in, the type of training you do from a kid. For instance, if you if you're, if you're grow up as a kid, as a gymnastic person, doing a lot of high spring jumps or a sprinter, your body's gonna develop a higher ratio of type two muscle fibers as opposed to type one. Remember, type two are more explosive, fast twitch muscle fibers. Use more in hypertrophy, more in hype, uh, strength based and um, explosive based movements. Those type one fibers are more endurance based. Those are the fibers that keep you pushing for longer and longer. Your sets that last longer than two minutes. If you're doing sets that last longer than two minutes, you're predominantly working the type one muscle fiber. Think about a runner, a long distance runner. They run for long period of times at a steady state. Those are type one predominant muscles. Type one predominant, type one fiber predominant people. So based on the way you train, you can train a specific type of recruitment pattern for your muscles. So here we're gonna do explosive training for chest and then to back superset again, which is gonna work mostly that anaerobic, that uh, explosive, really gonna burn through the ATP and the PC, our uh, creatine stores fast and really gonna train those type two explosive muscle fibers. So, we're gonna start on the dip bar again with an explosive movement, and we're gonna go straight to the pull up bar. All right, I'm gonna give you guys different variations of explosive dips. I'm gonna do a few of each variation starting at the easiest progression if you guys aren't very explosive yet and can't do explosive dips yet, this is how you can practice to build up your explosiveness. You're gonna start right in a regular dip position, go down, and you come up one arm at a time. 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 That push up is training that explosive fiber, those explosive type two fibers to push you up and explode your body up. Remember, that's the easiest variation of, a, of an explosive move, of a dip variation. If that's too easy for you, we're gonna move on to this one. All we'll do is small little leaps, small hand releases, just like that. Small little hand release. Remember, the key with the explosiveness, when you're doing explosive training, you want to really use that quick movement, quick. You don't want to sit there and reset each movement. You don't want to go down slow. Everything fast and explosive. So first, one arm at a time. Two, small jumps. Three, now we're getting into a more advanced or a more explosive jump. So, I gave you easy, medium, and harder variation. So you would hit six to 10 reps of each, and then move right on to the dip bar. You would work at whatever level you're at. So if all you could do is a single arm, fit six to 10. So five on each side. If you could do the jumps, six to 10 jumps. And if you could do explosive ones, as many as you could get explosive across the bar. All right, pose. 
same thing. I'll give three variations of explosive movements for the pull. So, beginner variation for a pull will be almost same thing, single arm movement like that. All we'll do, now, you catching yourself in that negative, that quick catch, it's gonna really fire up those type twos. You're exploding up, letting go, that quick explosion up, gonna really fire them on the way up and catching yourself in the negative, you're gonna really, really force them to contract fast and, and work on that eccentric without pulling the muscle. So, one arm at a time first. Second progression. We're gonna go in to out, ready? So, one arm at a time. Then we go side to side, wide to, in, wide to narrow. I'm pulling in and out. I'll give you the third progression. You're gonna give me third, like 15 seconds here to regenerate my ATP stores. Remember guys, doing those explosive movements, you're really gonna run through the fast energy stores in your system, which are the fastest ones to, that you burn through. ATP, which is adenosine tri triphosphate, and creatine, phosphocreatine. Those are stores that you burn through when you're doing movement, movements that last like 10 to 30 seconds. Explosive movements like that, you're really burning through those stores. And to fully, like I said prior, to fully recover your creatine and your ATP stores, you would optimally rest three to five minutes. But I'm a little more advanced. I'm just doing demonstrations now. So we're just taking a few second breaks in between. Now, hardest variation of uh, explosive pull. All right guys, so we can do a muscle up or we can do explosive pulls like this. Now mind you, we got the vest on guys. So it might've been a little not that clean, but uh, I'll take it off. And then, actually, I'm gonna keep it on. Remember, a muscle up is an explosive movement. Don't forget that. A muscle up is the opposite of a snatch in Olympic lifting. Think about a snatch. You got the barbell on the floor like this, you come up and you end like this. This is your end position in the snatch. What's the starting position in a muscle up? You're starting like this, on a, hanging from the bar, and you end with your body on top in this position. Same position as a snatch. Starting here, raising, going up. Snatch is one of the most explosive movements in Olympics, just like a muscle-up. A muscle-up is an explosive movement, especially if you're doing it clean. So, I'm gonna do it with the vest on, try to get a few, few explosive ones in there. Come on, you guys. 12 pounds on. But like I always said, right now, my goal is to do all my body weight training with this 12 pound vest. So it feels like body weight to me after a while. Rarely you're gonna see me training this body weight anymore at all. So even in my videos on my channel, I've been posting handstands, everything, I got this vest on. So, we went through isolation to start. The archer pushes to the rows on the bar. We went to hypertrophy, six to 10 reps, six to 12 reps, Strict form, dip, strict form dips, straight to pull-ups, six to 10, back to back. Now we went to explosive. And then remember, for the explosive movements, guys, it's back to back. You're hitting six to 10 reps on the parallel bar, and you're coming straight to the pull-up bar, and hitting three to six reps on the pulls. However, however explosive, whatever explosive movement you're gonna do on the pulls, you're gonna do three to six reps. Remember, pushing, everyone's always a little stronger in the pressure movement than the pull. So we'll keep the pressing a little, a little higher in the reps, a little more explosive, get a little more shoulder activation too. Pose, strict form, lats, biceps, but again, still generating that force from the core. Keeping the reps low though, three to six, because we're gonna fatigue faster on the pulls than in the dips. So again, you do three rounds of that, 90 second break, and that's three variations of supersets. Next one we're gonna go to, high rep training. Remember guys, I'm always a big advocate of high, high rep training. In my opinion, that's gonna produce the most bang for your buck with body weight training. You wanna keep that a lot of blood to the muscles. Now doing six to 10 reps to hypertrophy, it does, keeps blood to the muscles, but I would recommend taking shorter breaks than that. Now, we're gonna to go to high rep training until 15 reps or better. It's gonna get a lot of blood flowing. So imagine doing six to 10 reps 
and then doubling that. The muscle's gonna get double the amount of blood going to it. And then going to a superset with another high rep superset that's really gonna, one, it's gonna work on your endurance aspect and your work capacity, because now you're, you're doubling your reps, you're doing more reps in the same fashion, back to back. You're working on your lung capacity, your bar capacity, and you're, and you're gonna burn way more calories doing this set, get way more blood to the muscles, and you're gonna just get a way better pump. And like I said prior, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, that's, hyper, that's the swelling of the muscle. That's what gives the muscle that round, nice, full look. Strength training produces dense, thick muscle fibers. Strength training means one to five reps. Hypertrophy training, more on the, sar more on the higher rep side, more sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Really gonna produce that blood, that pump, that swell look. So now we're gonna go three sets, high reps. Now guys, you don't have to do all five of these in one set, in one exercise training. Because that would be five exercises times three to four sets each. That's 20 sets of supersets. So that's really 40, you're hitting 40 sets total. 20 sets on your back, 20 sets on your chest. You know what I'm saying? So you can pick three of these at a time and mix them up. So you pick three variations of the supersets that you like, that you want to focus on for a workout, and you put them into a routine. You do three to four sets of each, that's going to put you at nine sets of each workout, double it for each exercise, for each muscle group, you're going to be at 18 sets for a whole day of working supersets. Your body's going to be pumped, blood's going to be flowing, and you're going to get a nice burn regardless. So if you want, go for the five, but it might be a little too taxi on you guys, and you might burn out a little easier. So let's get going to the high reps. All right. We're going 15 or better. Now guys, you'll notice I'm not coming to full lockout on this. I'm keeping constant tension on the muscle. I'm coming just before lockout. Lockout lets the muscle relieve tension for a slight second before you go into the next rep. If you avoid locking out, one, it's a little less stress on the joints. When you're going high rep like that, you don't want to keep pushing your joints, locking out over and over. Eventually, it's going to become, it could become a problem down the long run, especially if you're doing weighted and everything, and if you're not controlling your body. So when I'm doing high rep training, when you're doing high rep style training like this, keep the tension on the muscle. You're going to force more blood, because the muscle stays under constant tension. You're not giving it that one second pause. Now you'll see when I did the hypertrophy sets, I emphasized strict form, because that, now you really want to go all the way down, full lockout. High rep training like this, you really want to keep the blood pumping. So let's get it. Same thing on pulls, 15 or better. Work up to your level. 12 or better could be for you. High reps, in general, you want to be over 12. For me, a little more advanced, with the, especially with the vest on, I still want 15 or better. So, like I said, guys, strength training, one to five reps. Hypertrophy, six to 12. High reps, endurance, sarcoplasma hypertrophy, 12 to 15. And don't be fooled when people say it's actual endurance training, you're training the type, type one fibers there. You're not. Unless you're repping out for over 90 seconds in one movement, which you didn't see me hit 90 seconds worth of pulls. My 20 pulls took, what, maybe 30 seconds? You're still training the ATP, the anaerobic pathways. If you're training the anaerobic pathways, you're still predominantly in that type two muscle fiber zone. Once you get past that, like I said, runners, long distance runners, people that do steady state cardio, that stuff that lasts over 90 seconds, you know, two minute sets, if you're on the push-up bar and you're going two minutes straight, no problem, that is not gonna produce muscle building effects for you. You are now working your type two, type one muscles for pushing. So if you could do two minutes of straight push-ups, you're probably already gonna be over the 75 rep clip, 100 rep clip right there. So again, 
even though you're at high reps like that, if it's so easy and you're just breathing through it, you're now predominantly working type 1 fibers because it all depends on the energy system that your body's using. And once you pass that 90, minute, 90 second to 2 minute threshold, your body's predominantly to 99% running off of aerobic energy systems, aerobic capacity. Anaerobic meaning no ox less oxygen to the muscles, working in that capacity of 0 seconds up to like 1 minute where you're hard, hard to breathe during your sets. If you could breathe and carry on conversations, you're working the aerobic capacity pathways. So now guys, I showed you isolations, showed you the, the hypertrophy type training, I showed you explosive type sets, I showed you high rep sets. Remember guys, it's always gonna be three to four sets of each of these superset routines. So I'm gonna show you the fifth type of training, which is gonna be isometrics. Remember guys, Isometrics, like I've, like I've repeated in videos on my channel, and I've mentioned in the past with George, my man Good Money, that uh, isometric training does not so much break down muscle glycogen as high reps. Remember, high rep training, reps, meaning reps, going through a range of motion over and over, putting a muscle through constant tension over and over, that's breaking down glycogen. Holding an isometric position is working a specific range of a, move, of, a, uh, of a movement. So while you're holding that position, you're not constantly breaking down glycogen in a muscle. You're working more the central nervous system to get strong and efficient at firing up all the muscles to hold your body in that isometric hold. So remember guys, isometrics are static moves. How they work and how they build muscle is by building time under tension. So like I said, an isometric is a hold. You can hold the rep for 10 seconds, and you can hold the rep for 40 seconds. All that time of holding, that isometric hold, is building time under tension. So if you're on the set and you're repping and you're doing 20 sets, 20, if you're doing a 20 clip uh, set of pushes or dips or pulls, you're predominantly gonna take about 25, 30 seconds, right? So the time under tension for that muscle is around 30 seconds, right? So a decent amount of tension per set. Go on, a, go on the bar and do an isometrics, you gotta start holding in a specific range of motion. Now you start building up the time. You may only be able to hold for a few seconds at a time. So say you're going into a hold. Let's see what tuck front. So going into an isometric hold. So say you can't hold, you're gonna go into a tuck front lever. You can't do a front lever yet, and you're working on a front lever. You're gonna start working the progressions of tuck holds, right? You're gonna work your tuck position. So say you can only hold that tuck position like this for two seconds. One, two, right? One, two, and then you can't hold no more. That's two seconds time under tension. How do you build on that? You continuously go. So you would do two seconds, wait a few seconds, go up again, one, two. All right, now you got four seconds. Wait a few seconds, go up again. Say you only get one second that next set. Now you got five seconds. The goal should be to accumulate a minimum of 30 seconds per exercise when, you, when you're working in strength training. Now, going back to the supersets for chest and back. We're gonna be doing isometric sets right now for chest and back. So, Start on the dip bar. Now remember, isometrics don't break down muscle glycogen in the sense that high rep and repetition after repetition does. Now we're training the nervous system. Okay. Now we're training the nervous system and to understand how to be strong in a specific range of motion. So I'm gonna give you three variations of a dip isometric. Ready? So on the easiest. You can't. You're not. Say you're not good at dips yet. You want to build on your dip strength. What's the number one thing I would tell you to do? Get strong in an isometric hold just like this. Isometric, holding the tuck L. Tuck L sit right here, you're engaging your chest, shoulders, everything. Flexing down like this, keeping your arms straight, you're gonna force your chest to be flexed the whole time. So that could be one isometric hold for your chest if you're a beginner. Second isometric hold for your chest if you're a, be for a beginner. We're gonna go down and we're gonna do an isometric push-up hold. Now remember guys, isometric is just holding a rep for a certain amount of time. So if you can only do this dip hold, you would want to accumulate. I can sit there two minutes. That's too easy for me, guys. That would not be any produce. That would not produce any effects for my body holding that position. If it's hard for you, you want to hold five, ten seconds at a time. Come down and go over and over until you get a minimum of 30 seconds, up to a minute of that hold total for your set. Now doing it as a superset. Begin a superset one. You will come here and just hold this isometric hold just like this. So if you can't do dips, this is your first position to get good at. From there, your superset on the pull-up bar is gonna be just like this. You 
can't do pulls yet, if you're at a beginner, if you're at a beginning level, you can't do dips yet, I'm gonna assume you can't do pulls yet. So what are you gonna do? Isometric hold on the pull-up bar. How are you gonna do it? You're gonna dead hang for as long as you can. Grab the bar, everything, feet together, and everything's gonna just hang like this. If this, is hard, if this gets too easy for you, you raise your knees and you hold in the tuck position, just like the dip. Lifting your knees now is gonna cause more leverage and more gravity be hitting as external weight on your knees. You're gonna activate more core, it's gonna be a harder hold. So number one easy, easy superset for a beginner, static dip hold in the support position, right to a dead hang pull. Number two would be, I'm gonna demonstrate it on the parallel bars, but this should be done on the floor too, guys. This is gonna be another isometric push-up hold, dip hold, ready? But chest and back. First chest movement, isometric push hold, down. We're gonna hold 90 degrees as long as we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna work as long as we can. We're gonna try to accumulate 30 to 60 seconds holds. Straight to the pull-up bar. From there, what are we gonna do? Halfway hold on the pull-up bar. Head to the bar just like this. Isometric hold. All right, guys, so 90 degree push-up hold right to a 90 degree pull-up hold. You superset that, back to back, three to five sets. You want, like I said, you want to, you want to accumulate a total of 30 to, 60, 30 to 60 seconds in each position for set after set. That's how you're gonna build strength and progress. Now, variation one, support hold, then hang. Variation two, 90 degree push, 90 degree pull hold. Variation three, we're going to a dip. We're gonna go to a full dip lockout now. So, how are we gonna train it? We're gonna work our way down slow now. This is where we're gonna hit the, but the negative's gonna come into effect. It's still gonna be an isometric, but we're gonna control our way down. So, starting in the top lockout position, come down slow, do as far as we can go. We're gonna hold here. From there, we're gonna come up, hold at 90. And then full lockout. And we're gonna do, 10 seconds there, 10 seconds at 90, 10 seconds of full lockout, but 30 second sets. Straight from there, we're going to the pull up bar. Thank you. One minute, thank you. Straight from there, remember guys, 10 second, full, uh, full extension, 10 second, 90 degrees, 10 second lockout. Pull up, variation, ready? 10 second chin over the bar. Ten second head to the bar. Ten second lockout. For 30 second sets. And again, three to five sets, back to back. Now that's gonna build. Holding the isometrics in each position is gonna build, build a lot of strength. It's gonna build strength in each range of motion. So you're gonna hold in this down position, the deep position on the dip. You're gonna build a lot of strength in that bottom range portion. So when you go down and do reps, you're gonna be real strong at that bottom portion to be able to get out the hold. Holding in the 90, 90 degree portion, holding there for time, you're gonna build a lot of strength in that sticking point. A lot of people, when they're coming up from dips and they're failing, where are they failing? They come out, uh, 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 and then they drop back down. Why? Because I can't get past that sticking point. Holding right there at that sticking point, that's gonna build a lot of, a lot of strength. Your nervous system's gonna understand. Be strong in that area, you're gonna be able to push through it. Then going straight from that sticking point to full lockout, your body's gonna understand. All right, now I'm strong enough to go from full down, full extension, to 90 degrees, to full lockout. Your body's gonna get strong in each range. You're just gonna be building time and time and time with the tension. Now remember, time with the tension, 30 second holds, is probably equivalent to like a 40 rep dip clip. Remember that, guys. You're keeping that muscle in the tension for a long period of time. So now we're gonna do one more variation, which is a bit harder, and which is gonna be more of a static move, like an element type training. So, another chest and back superset. We're gonna go into a tuck planche hold, which is gonna predominantly train the chest and the front delt, and then we're gonna go into a tuck front lever hold, which is predominantly gonna train 99% lats, core, and uh, hip flexors and everything. So. All right, so, tuck planche hold to start. We're gonna hold this the same way. As much, as many seconds as we can, 
and we're going to accumulate set at the set until we get a total of 30 to 60 seconds total hold. So, ready? Tuck plans, guys. Straight arms. Now, in your head, when you're in that position, you want to imagine you're squeezing these bars together. They're not going to move, but you, in your head, imagine squeezing them together. It's going to really activate the chest. It's going to force a contraction of the chest. Remember, you get an open mass contraction of the chest is when the elbow joint can cross the pec. That's how you get full contraction of the chest. That's why you see a lot of bodybuilders doing cable movements all the way over because that's full contraction. So if you're on a parallel bar, a stagnant stir a surface where you can't bring the bars together because they don't move, you in your head, you imagine you're pushing them together. That's going to activate the chest. It's going to cause an isometric squeeze contraction in the chest. Same thing when you're doing push-ups. You guys should imagine on each rep that you're coming up, pushing the floor together like this. You're obviously not going to do it. Your hands are going to be stagnant in place on the floor. But you're going to imagine you're pushing it together. So, isometric hold, planche hold on the, on the parallel bar. Ready guys, you've seen these in my ring videos. Straight to a tough planche hold, all lats, and we're gonna raise into it from, we're gonna raise into it from full lockout. Full straight arm pull. Ready? Knees up, retract, pull. Straight down. So tuck planche, training your chest and your shoulders to a tuck front lever, creating predominantly 99% lats. And the rest core, a little bit of glutes, a little bit of arms. So that's five different chest and back supersets you guys could utilize to take your training to the next level and also build muscle. Each of these style of training is gonna build muscle. Because you're gonna be working at whatever level you're at. And whatever level you're at, as long as you progress, muscle is going to be built. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to my man, That's Good Money. Come to my page, Bar Naturals. I was putting up new content there too. And uh, stay tuned, more to come. All right, thanks a lot, Bar Naturals Press. Links to his uh, YouTube and Instagram will be in the description box, man. Subscribe to his page, man, and follow him on the gram. You already know. All right.